Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Nugget of the Day. Uh, in this Nugget 12, we are going to talk about how to identify the phrenic nerve while you're performing an interscalene block. Now this is important because uh, the most common complication of interscalene block is uh, involvement of the phrenic nerve which can cause post-operative respiratory complications and therefore we want to avoid it. Um, having a look at the anatomy of brachial plexus, the easiest thing to make out here is that the brachial plexus comes from cervical roots and travels under the clavicle laterally. Whereas the phrenic nerve comes from superficial cervical plexus uh, and lies on the top of anterior scalene muscle as shown here. It originates from the superficial cervical plexus higher up and travels anterior to um, and medially over the anterior scalene muscles as delineated here. So it's interesting to note that while the brachial plexus travels from the same position laterally and downwards, the phrenic nerve travels from the same position medially and downwards. So at the top of the C4, C5 cervical level, although the phrenic nerve and the brachial plexus are almost at the same level, as you go further down, one moves laterally and one moves medially. And therefore, a lower approach to interscalene is thought to reduce the amount of uh, involvement of phrenic nerve while doing an interscalene block. In this representative diagram, uh, with the left upper corner being uh, medial and the right upper corner being lateral. We are scanning a distal view of the interscalene area uh, where you can see uh, the brachial plexus sandwiched between the two muscles. On the top you find uh, the sternocleidomastoid followed by the anterior and middle scalene muscles in the middle whereas the brachial plexus is sandwiched in a traffic light manner at this level between the two scalene muscles. And the phrenic nerve will lie at the junction between the sternocleidomastoid and the anterior scalene uh, and their interface. Uh, when we move our probe a bit more proximally, what we find is that the bulk of the interscalene muscles become a bit smaller. And usually only two nerve roots, C5 and C6, are visible uh, in this proximal view. And you find that phrenic nerve or the accessory phrenic nerve, as shown in this representation, lie very near to C5 nerve root and therefore injecting this particular plane they are more or less bound to be involved and as you move the probe distal they move laterally uh, over the anterior scalene muscle towards uh, um, not laterally but medially um, over the anterior scalene muscle. Uh, in this distal representative view again we can see that the phrenic nerve uh, has moved away medially uh, over the boundary of uh, the anterior scalene muscle and it hence lies away from the brachial plexus. And this is what is important to understand. Uh, let's also try and understand this by looking at the real-time ultrasound picture. In this representation, again, uh, you can make out the muscles, the sternocleidomastoid, anterior scalene and middle scalene, as well as you can identify the brachial plexus. As we move our probe proximally, we find that the C7 nerve root now starts going down into the intervertebral foramen. Um, the next to follow is the C6 nerve root and the chassis neck tubercle here, which is the anterior, is more prominent in the posterior, while the C5 nerve root is also visible with the phrenic nerve on top of it. As we move the probe again distally, we find that the phrenic nerve lies on the anterior boundary of anterior scalene muscle and hence can be seen moving from a more lateral uh, direction to a more medial direction as we go distally. Let's again have a keen look at this. Now again notice the area anterior to anterior scalene and you may be able to see two hypoechoic shadows moving medially and laterally at the corresponding levels. So that is it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this particular podcast and we shall see you in the next nugget. Um, do write to us and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.